another location from OAKLA to LV. I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders report. The Las Vegas Raiders have trimmed their roster down to actually 52 guys so that actually they can go out and still add one more player. Today's show is presented by Magic Spoon. Head on over to magicspoon.com slash Raiders where you all can save $5 off your very first order. So we're breaking down this video here because originally the Raiders had 80 guys on the team and they had to get it down to a 53-man roster by literally like 4 o'clock Eastern time but for whatever reason, the Raiders are always professionals at literally being the very last team to get all of their cuts in. So if you guys love Las Vegas, if you bleed silver and black, this is why you should subscribe to the Raiders Report. YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. Join the family. Keeping you guys up to date on everything going on around the silver and black. I don't want you to miss anything because we're going to have one hell of a year. Let's now look at the quarterbacks. They didn't get rid of anybody. They're going to keep Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, Nathan Peterman. No real surprises here. I mean, this is what everybody anticipated because of... Peterman's guaranteed contract. But now we're going to look at the running backs. The running backs that the Raiders decided to release. You got, you're got you getting rid of Trey Regis, who was a UDFA that was a big-time fan favorite. B.J. Emmons is no longer on the roster. And then Garrett Groshek, the fullback UDFA out of Wisconsin. The player that I'm going to concentrate on just a little bit more, it is Regis. The biggest reason why the Raiders decided to keep Jalen Richard over Regis, it comes down to two things. Special teams and that they are hoping that Richard Shard is going to be able to be healthy sooner rather than later. So the running backs that ended up making the roster, Josh Jacobs, no surprise, Kenyon Drake, Alec Ingold. When I did my final 53-man roster projection, this is exactly what I had. So I was, uh, you know, kind of interested to see ultimately what was going to happen here from top to bottom, but it is uh, something to be, you know, at least something to look at. Sorry, got a little off tangent. All right, let's look at the Raiders' wide receiver cuts now. Keelan Doss, Dylan Stoner, DJ Turner, and John Brown. Yes, John Brown. I mean, this was probably the biggest news of today, probably the biggest surprise cut, but Brown asked to be released. And when you talk to John Gruden yesterday, or was it two days ago he spoke, he was asked about Brown, and he was asked about Carl Joseph. Both guys ended up getting cut. He's normally not the best type of uh, liar, so that's definitely something what you see here. But John Brown, he was released by the Las Vegas Raiders. So when you look at the Raiders' wide receiver depth chart, again, it's Ruggs, Edwards, Renfro, Zay Jones, Willie Sneed. I uh, was trying to update this, but it's all good. John Brown, again, he is not on the Raiders' wide receiver depth chart. So I'm just curious here because I'm going to be at Raiders versus the Baltimore Raiders. Ravens game and I want to know if you guys have tickets or not I want you to type Y for yes or I want you to go ahead and type N for no do you have tickets for Raiders versus Ravens Monday night football if you're typing that Y for yes hey man hit me up on IG or hit me up I'm going to be at tailgate social partying it up if you're typing that N for no well then how about this if you show up to tailgate social before Thursday, the, the the kickoff, right, the Cowboys and Buccaneers game, tell them Mitchell Rents from the Raiders Report sent you, and you have a chance to get some free tickets. If you just want to hang out with me in general in Las Vegas during that weekend, you can go ahead and do so. Hit me up on IG, Mitchell Rents 365 Let's now go to the tight end position. Matt Bushman, the UDFA out of BYU. See ya. Derek Carrier, this one was actually kind of surprising. I thought that they were going to end up keeping him. Alex Ellis, he didn't end up making the roster. The name that really was kind of surprising rising here is Nick Bowers. We'll talk about him in a second, but Matt Bushman was a player in my initial 53-man roster that I thought at least had a halfway decent chance of making it, right? The old expression, money talks. He was given $125,000 as a UDFA signing. That's eighth highest in the National Football League, but they decided to go ahead and keep Nick Bowers, who, shout out to the Penn Stater, ends up making a spot he played pretty well in the final two preseason games. Now, I'll be honest with you, I hope he never sees the field because if he does, that means something happened to Darren Waller or Foster Moreau. But at the end of the day, I am happy for Nick Bowers ultimately making the squad. Now, I wouldn't have been able to make today's show if it wasn't for Magic Spoon. I also was sitting around waiting so damn long. I was getting hungry. Luckily, we have so much Magic Spoon here at the office that I was able to curve my hunger. And you guys can curve your hunger and stay in shape as well. Go to magicspoon.com slash Raiders. We're talking about high in protein, 13 to 14 grams per bowl, low in carbs, 
four grams of net carbs per bowl. Sweet and delicious, 140 calories. I mean, no added sugar whatsoever. If you're on a keto diet, it works for you. Non-GMOs, I mean, anything you guys are looking for. Healthy cereal, I got the hookup. Now, I will say this. I recommend getting the variety pack of four. That way you can mix and match. You know, I like variety. I mean, who doesn't? So go to magicspoon.com slash Raiders. That link is available for you all in the chat. And it's also available for you in the description and it's in the comments. I shouldn't have said chat because I'm not live. Let's look at the wide or the wide the offensive lineman now. Patrick Amane, Jeremiah Patazzi, and then Lester Cotton. Those were three guys that got the boot. Somebody that I actually thought was going to end up making the roster, the seventh round pick out of Pittsburgh, Jimmy Morrissey. They gave him the high ho. Devery Hamilton, Jared Jones Smith. Those are the players that ultimately got cut on the offensive line, which means week one up against the Baltimore Ravens. Here's what the offensive line depth chart is going to end up looking like. Brandon Parker is going to be that swing tackle, though I've said multiple, multiple times that Denzel Good could actually end up kicking it into right tackle. Also, that's not a picture of Andre James, so that one's on me. Nick Martin, John Simpson, here are your Raiders offensive line depth chart. So this is what I'm curious about, y'all. Out of all the players on your current roster right now, right, all the dudes, Who's the favorite player of yours? Like, is it Max Crosby? Is it Darren Waller? Maybe it's Nick Wachowski. Who is your favorite player on this Las Vegas Raiders roster? Because there's a lot of young names, and there's a lot of good players. And I anticipate a lot of people probably are going to go with the Derek Carr route, but I'm just curious, who's your favorite player on this team? That's time now to go to the defensive side of the football. Gary Green, Kendall Vickers, Niall Scott, Matt Dickerson. Kendall Vickers ended up making it last year. It was kind of like this surprise dude that ended up making it. But now, the biggest reason why he didn't make it, Darius Phylon has been an absolute stud. Gerald McCoy also played very well in his final preseason game. So it's not so much on what Vickers didn't do. It's more on them just adding a lot more talent on the defensive line. So when you look at a lot of these defensive tackles, Quentin Jefferson, Jonathan Hankins, I believe those are going to be your top two dudes. Again, Phylon and then Solomon Thomas. Thomas might actually also play a little bit of defensive end because they're a little bit worried about his size. And then Gerald McCoy, so shout out to him. In terms of the linebackers that ended up getting cut, Max Richardson and then Osmar Bilal, which means, yes, the Raiders did end up keeping a lot of linebackers. Now, the note that I made when I first started the show was actually around the Raiders having 52 players on their current roster. That is true, but that's also because of Denzel Perriman technically hasn't gone through yet the trade officially, but he is going to end up making the 53-man roster. So then in terms of some of the other players that they kept, they decided to keep Javen White, which makes me super, super happy. Now, we'll see what happens with some of these players like White and Morrow over the next probably 24 hours and where they decide to designate them, but it is a good sign that they ended up keeping Javen White, but the fact that they kept seven linebackers, that's kind of eye-popping to me. You knew it was going to be Littleton, Kwiatkowski. Again, Perriman will end up making the 53 once that trade goes through. Diablo, Nicholas Morrow, Tanner Muse, Javen White. The Raiders usually only keep five linebackers, so the fact that they went seven this route, hey, I think it's kind of interesting. Let's look at the defensive backs now. Dale Levitt. He had a chance simply because of his special team's ability. Bleedy Ren Wilson, Isaiah Johnson was the one that I went and made a video earlier today that was like the first cut, if you will. And then Carl Joseph. So the fact that Joseph and Isaiah Johnson both played so poorly in the final game, or I guess I should say Johnson played really poorly. I thought actually Joseph did a halfway decent job. But the reason why that they decided to not keep Joseph was they were worried about his availability because he's been battling a lot of injuries and of the play of Roderick Teamer Jr. I mean, Roderick Teamer was one of these guys that I named a winner multiple times. He had eight tackles in the second preseason game. He's been a great gunner. He's going to be able to give you a lot more versatility also on special teams. So as it stands right now, here's what the Raiders defensive back depth chart. They got a lot to be able to work with here. They decided to keep Keyshawn Nixon as well, which was a move that I was kind of surprised about. But if you're hoping that they can have some players that step up, Nate Hobbs, I'm definitely looking at you. So out of all those cuts, y'all, which one was the most surprising, like out of all of them. I mean, it's got to come down to Carl Joseph. I would say John Brown's definitely up there. And then Isaiah Johnson. I mean, I think those are the top three. Some people might throw out the name Jimmy Morrissey simply because the Raiders drafted him in the seventh round. But I'm going to end up going with John Brown. I'm going to end up going with Carl Joseph. Those are the most surprising to me, but I want to know from you.